Welcome to Glass Breakers Cafe, the podcast where we meet with impactful leaders to get their wisdom and insight on the future leadership and career development. Our goal is to inspire you and empower you to live an unlimited and smart future by breaking free from limiting beliefs, firefightings, and the invisible worlds of our society. I'm your host, Cindy Mongeni, future work expert, diversity accelerator, executive coach, and international speaker. Welcome to Glassbaker's Cafe, the podcast where we meet with impactful leaders to get their wisdom and insight on the future leadership and career development. Our special guest today is Fabio Botalo, Senior Marketing Manager at Kingston Technology. Welcome, Fabio, and thanks for spending this time with us today. Thank you, Cindy. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to share a little bit of my experience with you and with your audience. Thank you. So to get to know you better, could you please share your role and responsibilities as Senior Marketing Manager at Kingston Technology, please. Okay, uh, until last year, until the end of uh, 2020, uh, I used to have dual roles. I was in charge of uh, HyperX, which uh, was a division of uh, Kingston Technology and uh, Kingston. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, HyperX was sold to HP, and then I was uh, invited to stay with Kingston. And my role is very similar to what I had before. So I am in charge of uh, putting together strategic plans for the Brazilian market and also contribute to the rest of the region. So this means that I overview uh, all the disciplines of marketing for the Brazilian uh, country. Uh, and also I support some strategic projects for the rest of the region. Awesome. And you are focusing on a particular industry, right? Gaming industry or you do several type of yeah. industry? Until the end of last year, as I said, I was 90% uh, of the time uh, focused on the gaming industry. Uh, okay. Since the, uh, Kingston is beyond gaming, only gaming, uh, I see both. I see this, uh, the gaming segment and also the technology, the components uh, okay. segment. So it's been very important for the company to develop now this uh, gaming uh, segment. And that's one of the reasons why I accepted the challenge and uh, wanted to stay with Kingston. Because although, you know, everything we did before was part of Kingston. So to bring Kingston brand and technology to the gaming industry and to be recog recognized by the community is a... Uh, big challenge. And that's one of the reasons why I'm still with them and I'm very happy. Great. And Fabio, throughout your career, you had roles at a country level in Brazil, uh -huh. yeah. where you are originally from. You had also roles on a regional level covering Latin America. And at some point also in your career, you had global responsibilities. Yeah. So what were the lessons that you've learned by leading multicultural and global teams? So since I was very young, I always uh, loved to uh, interact with different cultures. I uh, remember that we didn't have internet at the time and we would exchange letters with people from other uh, countries. So it was, for me, it was fascinating to learn about, you know, different languages, uh, music, um, you know, religions and even businesses. So I uh, grew my career in the international market. So one of my graduations was international marketing because I always wanted to work in, uh, with different cultures and markets. So I think this uh, helped me a lot to understand and respect diversity, first of all. Mm. Very important when you are negotiating and dealing with the different cultures to understand uh, how they live, what, uh, what are their values, how they negotiate and respect it. So this changes your attitude and makes things much easier. 
I learned a lot when I started working with Mexico, for instance, and we believe that because it's a Latin culture, it's very similar to ours, and uh, it's not necessarily exactly the same. So you learn and you see the beauty of uh, this different culture, specifically Mexican culture. And then you go to Argentina, that is uh, uh, our neighbor in Brazil, and you still see that they are very different in some aspects. I think that uh, this helps you to become more flexible and mm -hmm. also uh, to, to learn, as I said, enjoy the beauty of these different cultures. I think it helps to uh, develop uh, your negotiation skills, as I said in the beginning. I think you get cultured, which is very important because when you sit at a negotiation table or at a restaurant with a customer, with a coworker, the conversation is, is much more interesting. So you have mm -hmm. much more opportunities to you to really grow the conversation and learn more about the other people. So I think that uh, uh, managing people from other uh, places to help you to, um, you know, respect and understand the way they work, the way they bring the ideas or the way they, they want to uh, explain a situation. To you. So as I said, you become much more sensitive to that. Yes. And if, if you manage uh, a diverse team, this is crucial for you. You need to be open. You need to be flexible. You need to respect diversity. And this is, I think, uh, very important for whoever is or intends to be in the international market or work with international uh, in the international market. And, and nowadays, it's not not only with international market because if we look at mm. every country, mm -hmm. now every country is becoming more diverse because there oh, is almost like every country receiving like new culture. So this is becoming really a critical leadership skill set, and I really appreciate your insight on the respect the flexibility, be open and honoring. And I love the word that you use, like the beauty inside the other culture. And this is key because unfortunately, what we are seeing at this moment in some part of our society is the totally opposite of those yeah. principles. So thanks for sharing those great, um, great insights. And before having this role in the gaming industry, most of your career, even if you were at different type of uh, companies, were more like consumer market, enterprise markets. Yeah. The gaming industry is a whole universe in itself. So how was your process of learning about this industry? And did you find some facts that maybe surprises you when you start diving in the gaming industry? I think uh, the gaming industry or start of working in the gaming industry to me it was a surprise and I have to confess that in the beginning I moved more uh, based on intuition <laughs> and uh, some you know very little information that I gathered at that time to be able to you know learn about what I was doing because I was hired by Kingston to work in the components industry, so commodities, right? So we were working with memories, SSDs, flash and other gadgets. Um, at a certain point, right in the beginning, uh, my vice president told me, uh, you need to look for an esports team to sponsor. I said, what the heck is she talking about? what an e-sports e team. I had zero idea. I said, why our company wants to uh, sponsor someone who plays video games? And uh, I went to Brazil for a meeting uh, with my local team and I uh, was talking to them that we needed to look for an e-sports team because uh, we uh, had and we still have and act actually we've, we've been manufacturing this type of high performance memory for more than 20 years. So we had this uh, lineup called HyperX, and it was for enthusiasts, overclockers, and gamers. And I, I knew zero about that. As you know, I, can't, I come from HP. I was working with hardware, never what, uh, with what was inside. So um, my first meeting, my first experience with this world was with two teenagers, basically. They were very young. And they were the owners of an esports team. 
And I was looking at them and they were sponsored by um, um, pasta company, local pasta company. And I was like, oh, this doesn't make sense. We're gonna sponsor a team that is also sponsored by a pasta you know, company. And they were very young and they were talking about uh, League of Legends, LOL. To me, LOL was when you were laughing and you put LOL, so yeah. you I, zero skills at that time, and this was almost 10 years ago, zero skills uh, about gaming. So these guys, and I still say that they were, uh, I mean, my mentors, and they still are, they are very great professionals. They are the pioneers maybe in Brazil and uh, in this scenario. They, they helped me a lot. So I first under, uh, learned about the games, the, uh, that this was going on for a while, actually for a long time. And my experience at that time was with Atari, but uh, to me, that thing was ridiculous, you know? I was like, uh, is this really an important market? And uh, then I went to my PR agency and I said, do you have any information about uh, gaming, the gaming industry? Can you give me more insights? So they mentioned the, the Brazil Game Show, which was an event that was uh, the first the first year was in Rio de Janeiro. Then uh, they were moving to Sao Paulo. So I decided with my previous experience, intuition, and based on what I knew about the gamers to uh, design myself a booth, a small one for, for us to display our products. We had coolers, we had memories, we had SSDs and, uh, it was like an underground environment, like for skaters. That was my idea at that time. So then when I saw what happened during that show really changed my life. So um, I, I saw big brands going there. At uh, that time, 10 years ago, it was still very small, the show. And then when you go to BGS, the last edition was in 2019. It was this kind of a Hollywood, Broadway, or whatever you, 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 you name, big, huge show with more than 300,000 people going for four days. We had a 5,000 uh, square uh, feet booth. We put a truck in there. We won for three years as the best uh, booth of the show. So the industry is huge. To give you an idea, in 2021, I think it's going to reach $175 billion wow. worldwide. And uh, it's going to surpass uh, $200 uh, billion dollars until 2024. So it's huge. And it's an industry that draws every single day. And you have the publishers, you have uh, um, um, the platforms, you have the, the peripherals, which was our case you have the components, then you have the gamers, and you have the influencers. So you have this huge industry. And uh, it was very exciting to learn about all the things as we moved on. And then we ended up sponsoring uh, several teams. We uh, became top three brands uh, in the world. In Brazil, we became the first, uh, the top brand among gamers in peripherals. And uh, of course, I'm selling my fish, as we say in Portuguese, but what I'm saying is that it really, what helped me a lot was to be close to them, to the community, to listen to them, to understand how they are, and to going back to some of your, uh, I, I think a previous uh, question that we were talking about diversity. In this case, I would say that uh, um, break some eyes or prejudice against older mm -hmm. people because I'm not part of this generation. So I, I know that they, they usually see me as the Uncle Fabio. Uh, <laughs> because I'm not uh, equal, I'm not the same, you know, I'm not a young, uh, hardcore gamer. But I, I've been always very uh, respected and um, I, I met a lot of very interesting people. And I think it's something that is growing, doesn't stop growing. And for Kingston now, we are doing the same, uh, creating the same pathway in a different fashion, of course, because we are not peripheral, but uh, we are getting very good results in less than two months that we launched our uh, new lineup. 
Yes, congratulations. And what is great about this experience, Fabio, that I'm taking note of, is the growth mindset. Because yeah. as you were mentioning, it was an universe that was totally foreign for you, yeah. but you really went open and there is a growth mindset and there is also what is called reverse mentoring when you have like younger yeah, people, yeah, educated <laughs> older people. And once again, as you mentioned, the value of being open, respect uh, uh, towards other people. And this had led us to a tremendous success. So congratulations for this. Thank and you. I hope like the audience is taking some note because nowadays everybody needs really to adopt this growth mindset because oh, yeah. everybody is going to get to be disrupted. So we really need to embrace the, uh, the unknown. And you were sharing with us, like in the last 10 years, how the gaming industry has been growing, but, but also by the number you've been sharing with us, this is still a fast growing mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a tremendous growth the last decade. What are the trends that you think will be shaping the gaming industry in the next decade? Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, several things happening, of course. Um, we have a lot of independent producers and they have problems to uh, um, distribute their games. So um, it's not my belief only, but uh, it's going to happen. We're going to have more platforms out there allowing this independent, uh, they call the Indian um, uh, game uh, publishers to bring new games to the market. So this is something very important. Uh, I think we're going to also see a huge diversity in games. We are talking about diversity because uh, when you see the games and all the, the content in the industry, you tend to think that it's pretty, mu uh, pretty much male yes. uh, man playing. This is true, but not for mobile gaming. For mobile gaming, the majority is female. So just uh, to give you, you an idea, uh, in the US, I think 65% of uh, the, the gamers, the mobile gamers are women. Oh. Uh, in the case of a PC game and console, console game, is very similar to uh, you know technology. It's more male, so uh, we see uh, some content already changing and bringing more female content to you mm -hmm. know the stories to the context, which is something interesting. But uh, women still like suffer a lot. Uh, suffers uh, women suffer a lot of prejudice. Uh, but they are kind of becoming more, they are uh, becoming more um, popular among gamers and more popular in this industry. And uh, if I'm not wrong, I believe that 25% uh, of the people who work in this industry is women, is a woman. So um, we see that num the number is growing and this is very important. So we have more, we have more interesting content coming up. Um, the cloud gaming is also something that mm. is uh, probably going to help a lot. So instead of buying and uh, loading your game, you just go and stream. So it's going to okay. be faster. So people are so like in such in a hurry all the time nowadays. So it's going to be much more convenient for everybody. Uh, the other uh, point that I think it's going to be a huge battle for the upcoming years is uh, uh, between Sony and Microsoft with the console. Uh, just to give you an idea, PS5 is coming with an SSD that uh, is something that we manufacture, uh, but they are coming up with SSD, which is gonna uh, make the, the, the console um, to run much faster, right? So these are pretty much the, 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 what I have in my mind that uh, it's coming up in the future. And I believe that we're going to see a lot of things in terms of peripherals. When I left uh, HyperX, um, we had a such sophisticated technology for gamers. You cannot imagine it, Cindy. Uh, um, the keyboard is, it has to be different for certain games, for each type of game, uh, even the touch. Uh, you, you have uh, different technology for uh, headsets. Uh, you have different technology for mouses. Uh, 
everything is so sophisticated nowadays and they are so like demanding this audience is so demanding that you're going to see probably cool things coming up that i'm not even aware of but they are probably working on future products and they will really you know make us to say wow I, I can't believe because what i have for instance microphone uh my microphone is rgb uh you have a lot of other uh you know features that you say do i need it but in a when you work with enthusiasts or gamers you see that it's really something that is relevant for them so there are a lot of things coming up and i think it's it's a very exciting industry in our case in terms of components the memories we we, we bring the ssds will help especially in the pc experience and uh, in the near future, I'll, uh, now with PS5, with the SSD experience too. Fantastic. Looking forward for all those uh, innovation in the gaming industry. And Fabio, this podcast is about career leadership, the future trend. And for this last question, it's a bit of mix of those three trends because it doesn't look like this, but you've been building a dynamic career for now almost like three decades. You started, you were like super young, you were only five. But uh, <laughs> I should be censored, I said to you before. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, and, and many in this uh, tech industry, which is always like fast paced. So, what has been your strategy to keep being relevant in this industry and, and build this career that is finding more than three decades now? Uh, it's funny that you were saying that because sometimes we look at, at mirror and we see uh, someone who's aging, right? But internally, I feel probably the same as I used to feel when I was 30 years old. So I think it's uh, this battle between body and mind is really, um, it's hard. But anyways, I've been very fortunate to work with very, very nice people and very open-minded people. Of course, we always have our um, problems during the, our journey, but um, I've been very for fortunate and I learned a lot uh, in, in, in the aspect that we, we always need to re reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you are open to change, when you are flexible, and you'll see a situation that, oh, well, that's not what I expected. That's not what I wanted. But uh, still, I'm going to, you know, uh, move forward and I'm going to give my best. I'm going to learn. Yeah, then you have this uh, feeling that, wow, well, I achieved my goals. I feel stronger. I feel happier. And uh, I think this is important. Uh, also, is to, uh, to pay attention to what's about what's, what is going on um and uh, to learn from your co-workers from your colleagues from your friends from your leaders from the competition i think it's very important because then you see something that you like and you think to yourself maybe i can do better or mm -hmm. maybe i can learn and do similar or maybe i need someone who can help me to do this and better so that's when i think having a great team a good team is important um, and that's a funny story because uh, as i said when i started in the gaming industry i i'm not part of the gaming generation right so the staff was uh, pretty much like uh, between 25 30 32 years old and um, one of the persons who worked in my team she didn't mention me, but she said, well, there are only old people in this company. And I was like, really? And then I said, I'm going to prove, I didn't say, it, but I said, I'm going to prove that I'm, it's much more interesting to work with older people than you think. And we're going to have fun together. So I think that uh, along my career, um, I think I had the chance to always look for opportunities, be open and available. So never said no, unless I really knew that I wasn't prepared, technically speaking. But if I felt that I could learn fast, I would be very honest, and I am always very honest, to say, okay, I still don't know enough, but I'm going to learn, and I'm going to make it happen. So I think that's one of the things I, I think it's important. Yeah, it's, it's great, because you are mentioning, again, we can see like this growth mindset of learning, 
and uh, also of, of taking action um, yes. because it's like we learn by doing. So yeah. I love this, this approach. Fabio, we are almost reaching a, an end to our time together. And the last question is more a dreaming question. Mm -hmm. So the last question, I know you are like super busy, but if you could have one additional hour, a 25 hour day, mm -hmm. what will you do with this extra hour? Can I get a list? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably I would spend with my family. I live far from my family. I've been living here um, for more in the US for more than 20 years now. And I miss them a lot. I always have the opportunity to go and be close to my friends and family. But with the pandemic, things uh, have changed a little bit. So it's not as easy as, as it used to be. But I think now spending time with them is something that really that, uh, counts mm -hmm. up, uh, to me. So I would spend more time with them and with my friends and family, of course, my, my close friends and family. Yeah. Great. So on this note of quality time and spending time with our loved ones, we are going to close our time together, Fabio. And, and thanks a lot again for sharing those insights your wisdom on your career and also what is coming up in the gaming industry and those critical skill sets and mindset to lead multicultural and global teams. So thank, thank you very you. much, Fabio. Thank you, uh, Cindy. It's been an honor, a pleasure, and uh, thank you very much again. <laughs> thank you. And to our audience, thank you very much for spending another we week with us. And I'm looking forward to see you next for the encounter at Glassbreakers Cafe. If you enjoyed today's episode of Glassbreakers Cafe, please subscribe and share with your friends on social media. Also, be sure to follow me, your host, Cindy Mongeni, on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. If there is any special guest or special topic you would like us to address, please drop me a note at cindy at newskiesnation.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And remember, no one can predict the future, but we still need to prepare for it. See you next week. If you enjoyed today's episode of